Hi all, welcome to another catch up review, this time for the Lego Batman movie. With the release of the Lego Batman movie on Blu-ray this week, it's time for a review. The Lego Batman movie is the spin-off to 2014's surprise animated hit, The Lego Movie. This time directed by Chris McKay and sees the return of Will Arnett's Lego Batman, complete with Christian Bale Batman impersonation. Now, we've seen side characters in popular films get their own film in the past and it hasn't really worked out. But this time, it absolutely works. And honestly, Batman's a pretty safe bet if you're gonna spin off a side character. Now, the film really is a love letter to Batman and his esteemed and storied history, with the film being jam-packed with references to not only all his films and shows, but his comic history as well. This is definitely the bright night, comedic Batman that Adam West kind of personified and defined in the 60s, and with Adam West's unfortunate passing this week, there is some kind of melancholic an almost surreal irony with this releasing the same week and in a weird way it kind of acts as a sincere kind of modern way of honoring Adam West but obviously the film doesn't just honor Adam West's Batman it honors Batman's entire history and the character himself the film off the bat is hilarious it's the Warner Brothers Lego movie humor you've come to expect which really differentiates their films from a Pixar or a DreamWorks this is the most these films have walked the line of being straight up parody, but really walked the line of being a smart satire and comedy without making fun of Batman. The film features a lot of rapid fire dialogue and gets a bit tiresome in the second act, but it still remembers to have a lot of heart as well, with the film focusing on Batman, sort of learning to work with others and gives us the Bat family fans have come to expect. The film is, as I was saying, absolutely hilarious. I was laughing throughout. And for a movie that cost $80 million, which, don't get me wrong, is still a lot of money, looks like it costs a hell of a lot more. The movie looks phenomenal in the animation department. The Lego look and style here still looks as great as it did in the Lego movie back in 2014. The film does get a little bit murky in the third act and the colours kind of mush and get a bit samey and it's sort of squashed together a little bit. But otherwise, the film is very eye-catching and the movie, again, is filled to the brim with visual references to Batman's past. It is really nice to see Will Arnett's Batman progress throughout the film and learn to live with a family. Robin being accidentally adopted is absolutely hilarious. The Will Arnett, Michael Cera dynamic is fantastic, which Arrested Development fans would really appreciate. Zach Galifianakis as the Joker is fantastic. They really understand the Batman-Joker relationship where they are two sides of the same coin, much like how Christopher Nolan understood that with The Dark Knight in 2008. Rosario Dawson, who is always wonderful, is wonderful here as Batgirl Barbara Gordon, where they take a spin with her character and have a takeover as Commissioner Gordon from her father, and really portrays a great relationship with Batman, unlike what the Killing Joke adaptation attempted to do in 2016. Ray Fiennes is perfect as Alfred. There is a missed opportunity, and I am going to get into some mild spoilers here, so maybe just skip the next 30 seconds, but a missed opportunity with the ubers in the film who are like the big bad villains in the film that the joker teams up with and one of those ubers is voldemort who in the harry potter films is played by ray fines and instead voldemort is played here by eddie izzard who is a comedian i absolutely love but a bit of a missed opportunity because there is no interaction between Alfred and Voldemort in the film. So just feels like a missed opportunity there. But a lot of the Ubers here are sort of Warner's properties. You get Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter characters, as I mentioned, mixed with some random choices like Doctor Who in there. But it sort of gives a bit of weight to that larger Lego universe where Lego has its stamp on a lot of different properties as well as sort of connecting it a bit more to the original Lego movie. The other DC heroes here are used just the right amount so it still ends up being Batman's movie. For me, Superman's doorbell in the film being the John Williams Superman theme is one of the greatest moments I've had in a movie theater back when I saw it in the theaters and again watching it on Blu-ray it's still absolutely fantastic and Batman's Batcave password is still again fantastic but I'll let you hear that for yourself. 
yourself if you decide to catch the film. But really, there are so many great Easter eggs here, not just for Batman fans, but I think just for comic book and movie fans in general. The soundtrack here is pretty great, actually. It's not quite as catchy as I think the Lego movies was, and the score is surprisingly good as well. It pays respect to previous Batman scores like Hans Zimmer's work with The Dark Knight and Batman vs Superman, but this movie really celebrates Batman. We haven't seen him this funny in a long time. Not that I don't like the more serious Batman either, I'm a fan of The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller Batman that's kind of defined the character for the last 30 years. But you really get to learn to have fun with Batman here while also breaking him down and deconstructing him in a way that isn't disrespectful to the character or Batman's fans. So really guys, go and enjoy Lego Batman now. It is out on Blu-ray, it's out on digital HD, I think in some parts of the world, I think in Australia maybe, it is still out in theaters. So if you get your hands on it, catch it, have a great time. It's a fun animated flick with a lot of laughs. The Lego Batman movie gets an 8.5 out of 10 from me. Thank you for watching this review guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, do remember to hit the thumbs up button, give it a like and comment down below in the comment section. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, do hit the subscribe button and also click the little bell. That will remind you of when the Mono Report uploads new content. And don't forget to also follow the Mono Report on Facebook and Twitter at the Mono Report. Thank you so much, guys, and don't forget to stay right here for your Mono Fix. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.